Welcome to another one of my tutorials of Wise Flight. In this tutorial, I will teach you how to make planes for Wise Flight. For Wise Flight, you can use several softwares such as Blender, Wings 3D, or SketchUp, but the one I wouldn't recommend using is SketchUp, since some of the surfaces might actually be invalid for the simulation, so I'm going to use Blender for this one. For this tutorial, I'm just going to make a quick model. So first we press X and delete. We go to we press the spacebar, add, mesh, and then we select a cylinder. And let's just leave it at its default. That way it'll be safer to use. And we're reliable for the simulation itself. So now let's go press the spacebar, transform, rotate on that, rotate on axis, and rotate on the right axis. Okay, rotate on um, the x-axis. Let's scale. Rotate on the x. And now let's scale this up. Scale on axis and then Y go. We're gonna to scale this down. Each one of these units represents one meter. So if you want to make the missile around four meters, for example, let's make it around four units. Now let's go to edit mode. We press W, subdivide, and do it again. And then press A to unselect all. And A again to select all, but we're un unselecting it, so we're pressing A again. Now let's press B, and we're to select. And then scale down. And make sure the axis, make sure the the model itself is aligned on, on the y-axis. Make sure the nose points in the direction, in, in the right direction that the y-axis is pointing at. That's the direction that most white white flight models point at. Now it's and now let's get an angle where we can select the surfaces we need to. And now let's scale it up. Now let's select some of the points in here, and we'll drag them to the inside. And you can do that by selecting B. Select B again, and then do it as many times as you need until we have all the points in this area selected. Okay. Just my mistake. Select all the points within this area.
and I'm dragging to the inside. And now let's go to edit mode. I mean object mode. Now we have the the missile lined up. Now we can save it as MR the MR one. That's just short for mass retaliation weapon number one. Now let's open this up. So go to file, export, VRML 97. Otherwise known as VRML 2.0. That's the format that's required for YSVRML 2.0. And then export. Now let's open up YSVRML. Just press it, press it more. And then open the file. Let's check something. Who might have made a mistake? So now let's, let's see what we can do. Let's give it a texture. Even if it's, even if it's a hidden texture, it will still be a useful, a useful texture. So now we have a text field. Now let's save it. And then export it again. And there's still a mistake. I can tell because the missile shouldn't look like this. That means there must be some transferred, transferred faces, and that means we made a mistake. And I'll demonstrate by showing you what happens if you use this as an SR file. So go to export, SR. Wait, never mind. It's been successful. And you can tell it's been successful because there's one key element that makes it makes a model successful. 
If you see a set of codes below the main set of codes, which are the VR codes, that means the model has succeeded. So now we don't need to be concerned about this model anymore, so now we're just going to copy it. Copy and make three copies of it. Paste. Oh, wait, stop. Okay. And copy. Paste. And paste. The first one we just leave it alone. The second one we name it MR1 Co. or Collision. Co is just a abbreviation of Collision. Either one works with the last one. And then the next one we name it MR1 Cockpit or we just use an abbreviation. And I'll give you an example of what a failed model looks like. A failed model practically doesn't show up at all. Well, or only partially. I copied the data from the missile and made this one. That was just a failed try. We don't want, we don't want to make the same mistake again, so let's go to locations. Nice point. Show package contents. And then we go to the aircraft file. Pull the aircraft folder. Copy the missile. And now we have these. And now we just copy the date the missile that file. Now let's open the data file and make some changes we need to make. So we'll just name this one MR1. And just keep in mind, the missile file is another one I made. You probably know, know that before because I already showed it to you, so now we just go. So now we need to open the aircraft ISD file. And now let's scroll down to a location to see where it needs to fit between. So the MR1 file goes below the missile. So now we just scroll down to missile and then let's put it in there. So first we put it in that file. So let's type in aircraft slash Irma 1 and then the next file is the SRI we don't really put in DMN files but since we don't have a DMN file we can use an SRI file as a substitute That's actually one of the most common mistakes. Make sure there aren't any misspellings in the name of the data. Or else it'll wise flat will count it as an invalid file. So now we have it done. Now we just save it. And let's see how our model looks like in the last flight. Search MR1. And there it is. Successful. Let's see how this model works. Oh, wait. I made a mistake. 
am I... Yeah, I made a mistake. It might just simply be a misspelling. Oh, I put a cockpit for that one. That's what happens when you're making a spelling. The simulator fails to load the file. Okay, there it is. That should improve the problem. I mean, solve the problem. That improved. There we go. Oh, wait, wrong, wrong, wrong one. Do want me a bit of a display error, but that's very common. But there are some models that actually appear very solid, like the Death Star. And I'll show it to you right now. And there is the infamous Death Star from Star Wars. The only problem with this model is, and the planes tend to crash in time, well actually they don't really crash. You can simply fly through this model and not die. But this is a one tenth scale of the actual model. The actual Death Star is around 100 miles in diameter. That would be too big for West Flight, so I only made it 10 miles. But this is by far the largest model anybody has made for West Flight. So, this might be a new world record. And if you're wondering how I run Wise VR ML 2.0 on a Mac, you just need to download two softwares, Winebounder and Y. You can simply. Oh wait. Apologizing. I'm just having some technical difficulties. Okay, so now we go. We, we type in wine bottle. And then we just go to the main website. And then click download. I don't need to click download since I already have it installed. And the other file we need is the X file. Okay, this is the official website for XCOTS. And now we just press download here, and then that's all basically. Oh, sorry about that. I just open it. My email, that's the only disadvantage of, of using, of having a, a menu on the bottom. You might select a software you don't want, and then it opens up. So. Thanks for watching this tutorial and, oh wait, just a quick note. Oh, oh yeah, okay, I forgot, oh, okay. So now, if you're wondering where to download WISE VR ML 2.0, go to the WISE Flight homepage.
and then go to free softwares. And scroll down, and then you find VS, YSVR ML 2.0, and just press download. And that way, the folder should look like this. And all, all we need to do is open one of these, and then press, and then select convert to a simple OS application with builder application bundle with one banner. We don't need to do it since we already have installed. As you can see. So thanks for watching this tutorial and I hope I will see you later.